The first DLC characters for Earth Defense Force World Brothers have been released and with them came one that had some people scratch their heads, mine included. We got three girls from D3's Dream Club series of games and then there's Mecha Yuki. Now Mecha Yuki is quite special. At first you might think he's just a fun robot, cyborg version of the regular soldier. Diehard EDF fans however might recognize the name Yuki, at least if you're used to the original Japanese versions. I was a bit intrigued myself, because the first two EDF games are among my favorites on the PS2. The second one in particular being one of the first games I ever made YouTube videos for. Wait a second. Can't be. It's been 10 years already?! Anyway, I played those games a lot and I don't remember there being any playable robot or cyborg characters. In fact, the first game only has one playable character, the soldier. So why is Mecha Yuki listed under the first game? I actually went back to dust off the old PS2 to find out if maybe there's a hidden cheat code or secret character or whatever, but no. What I did find out, however, was actually even more curious. You see, to make up for the lack of actual NPC characters that fight alongside the soul soldier, the developers recorded a lot of radio chatter to give the illusion that there is this huge battle going on. It's usually either someone from command informing you about the developments on the front lines, what city is being attacked, etc. But it's also oftentimes fellow soldiers describing what they see, what weird creature they encounter and so on. It's very War of the Worlds like and actually quite well made. Unfortunately, all of the voice acting was removed from the western release due to budget constraints. There just was no money to translate and record all that dialogue for what was essentially a bargain bin budget title. So if you played a localized monster attack growing up, you sadly didn't have any voiceovers whatsoever. But anyway, in the original there's one radio chatter in particular during the third mission in which a soldier named Yuki reports about his encounter with a group of giant ant-like creatures. Here's the scene in game. I've put some subtitles for you so you understand what's going on. So it's kinda implied that poor Yuki-san got covered in acid and died shortly after. He's not heard of again during the first game, but in the sequel, known as Global Defense Force in the West, there's a weapon for the newly introduced Pale Wing Soldier class called Thunderbow. And in its description it says that it was developed by a Dr. Yuki, Japan's leading scientist in the field of electronics. He helped develop several iterations, always improving on the technology, but after finishing his design for the Thunderbow 30, he disappeared without a trace. In the later PSP and Vita ports, which expand on the story a little bit with 7 additional missions, there is a new variant of the Thunderbow called Thunderbow XD and according to its description it was again developed by Professor Dr. Yuki who had returned. Now why do I mention all this? Well of course there is a connection between Private Yuki and Dr. Yuki and according to the 2005 released Inferno Guide strategy book for the second game, Dr. Yuki is his older brother. And he's a scientist, and he's the leading authority in the field of electronics, and he disappeared for a while after his brother's untimely demise. So what if he used his professional expertise, which didn't shy away from reverse engineering alien technology by the way, and managed to save his brother's life? We never found out what exactly happened between Earth Defense Force 2 and the additional 7 missions from the PSP port, and frankly I don't think the developers put that much thought into it either back then. But poor Yuki's desperate Sasanda became somewhat of a meme. They later paid homage to this in the amazing live action commercial for EDF3 Portable on the PlayStation Vita, which features both the soldier Yuki being killed by acid, Sasanda! Yuki! Yuki! as well as Dr. Yuki himself. Although they don't seem to be brothers this time around. But keep in mind EDF3 is not a direct sequel, but takes place in its own continuity, telling a similar story, so details might be a bit different. And that brings us to Yuki's return in Earth Defense Force World Brothers, which is, in a way, a sequel to all the other different continuities, including the one that started with the original first two games. 
Mekayuki's DLC description also directly references him getting sprayed with acid and being one of the fallen soldiers that protected Earth from the invaders. And I gotta say I find it very funny they brought back this random never actually seen Yuki from the first game who had a total of like 5 seconds voice time. But it also shows that the developers actually care for the series and seem to be big fans themselves. Another funny thing is Mekayuki's special attack, Sanda, which perfectly encapsulates the quirky, humorous side of World Brothers. It is a huge lightning storm that would make Marvel's Thor jealous and he announces it by shouting Ich ni Sanda, which is a play on words on numerous levels. First, there's the obvious reference to the original catchphrase Sanda! which, as we learned, means it's acid. But in Japanese it sounds exactly like the English word thunder, as in thunder and lightning, which is also pronounced sanda in Japanese. Sanda, sanda. Then he's counting ich ni san, which, you guessed it, means one, two, three in Japanese. But the san is already the first syllable of sanda. <laughs> so without context it could mean both. One, two, thunder, or one, two, acid. And I just can't wait to see how they even try to bring these jokes across in the English version. One, two, three, under. <laughs> they most probably won't. Anyway, that's the weird origin of Mekayuki. I hope you enjoyed this little journey into EDF lore. If you did so, feel free to hit that like button. If you didn't, don't hesitate to drop a dislike. And as always, thanks for watching, enjoy gaming and see you all next time. Subscribe to this channel.